My name is Vahid Chitzos, part of Elite Mastermind Group. Thank you for being here this morning. Go ahead and introduce yourself to everybody. Let us know where you're coming in from. Sure. I am, I, I'm, I, I'm, a, I'm located out of Rockwell, Maryland, so I'm all the way on the East Coast. I'm aware that Ooh. I believe you're out on the West Coast, right? So, Los Angeles. Good Los weather. Angeles. 70 degrees outside. I don't know. Do you guys have the snow over there? It's cold. Uh, we're, we get into the 30s right now. So that's why I'm in a, I'm in a coat and a scarf. And yeah. um, But today it's sunshine. So we're going to get some rain tomorrow. I actually had my AC running yesterday, just so you know. I have my AC. So let's dive into it. Thinking Grow Rich, Dr. Hills, Principles and Philosophies. Sure. When did you get started? How did you get started? I got started about 10 years ago when um, I've been in consulting for the past nine years. I used to be at Deloitte Consulting. And on that journey, I had learned that I'd had to invest in myself. I also knew I was supposed to be a coach. I had no idea how I was going to transition out of consulting into that. And through, the, through getting involved with a life coach, finding myself getting certified to be a performance coach, and realizing that the investment to yourself is your biggest key to your success. Um, your life is won or lost between your ears, right? Your mind, your mindset is everything. The habits, the behaviors, your values, your beliefs, those can all be changed. Those can all be reinforced based on how you condition yourself. So I've been on this journey to not only improve myself, but to help other people realize they can become their best selves. They can achieve their dreams. They can um, maximize who they are so that they can become, um, optimize themselves professionally and personally. So based on your experience, and I'm going to ask you a few questions on Thinking Gorge, but based sure. on you helping other individuals to be mm -hmm. on their success journey, what would you say is a common denominator that holds people back that we should know about? What are a couple of things that you see repeatedly with your clients or when you did consulting? doesn't matter if they're nine to five employees or, or, or CEO or business owner or entrepreneurs. I think human beings are human beings. So what are some of the common things that you can share with us? Common things I've seen, including myself, is procrastination. That's your inability to use your own personal power. When you're procrastinating, you are being selfish. You are saying, I'm more afraid of myself than what I have to offer and add value to other people. There are people waiting for you to serve them, to help them, to lend a word of encouragement. And if you sit there in your own little world like myself, I'm getting over the fear of public speaking, right? Then am I helping myself and other people? No, I'm not. But I find that that is what people would say. Um, I noticed that that's helped people back from taking action. They know what they want. We all know we want to eat healthy. We know we need to take care of ourselves. But are we really doing something about it? If we have this idea on our head, like our visual, if we visualize where we want to see ourselves, are we going to take action and follow through? That's the opposite of procrastination. Are you going to follow through on your commitments? Are you going to follow through on what you say you're going to do? Are you going to, are you going to show up for yourself? Because if you're not even doing that for yourself, you're not going to do it for somebody else. So you're telling me that you have a fear of public speaking, your oh, yes. Instagram account is blowing up and all you're doing is speaking. I would have never thought, if you wouldn't have said it, I would have known. I, I thought maybe you're trying to reduce the amount of time you're in public speaking. No, I, I know I'm supposed to be one. Thank you. I'm supposed to be one. And the video challenges was for me to get comfortable. And in that tr process, I've realized I love to interview people. If this is what I get to do all the time, this experience of being on my first live live Instagram video, you're, you're giving this experience to me right now. Thank you. It's invaluable to me because I realized like, this is not so bad. I can do this, right? I can it's do this. Totally. I don't know. For some people, it just comes naturally. It just comes in. But you want to know something? I realized when we have fear of doing some type of an activity, yeah. the fastest way for me, I don't know if it works for other people, but the fastest way for me to get over it it's just, just walk through it. It's just literally to do it. The more I think about it, the more I convince myself not to do it, and I come up with more reasons why I shouldn't do it. Mm -hmm. So I catch myself and I just do it. Because when, once you do it, then all of those excuses are gone. And here's the, here's the scary part. 
I am very good at convincing myself because I know what to tell myself for not doing it. Mm. So if I don't do it, then it's just going to be a bigger, bigger hurdle, bigger challenge for me. So the best way is just walk through it. And that's how I get things up. But it is scary when I do things that I'm scared of. Mm-hmm. But I still, you know, I think me wanting to do it is just a little bit more powerful than my fear. Just a little bit, not too much. Mm-hmm. Just, just like one inch, like 1% over that and you do it. So I know that, uh, I know that you got to walk through it. There's no playing around with it. Oh, absolutely. And I've, I've drawn that from listening to Tony Robbins, listening to Mel Robbins. You have to take action. You have to follow through. If you, if you can find enough leverage that takes you to the, to, from the pain to the pleasure, because we, I know I, I try to avoid pain at all costs. So even the things that I, I want to change about myself, I go, wow, I'm going to be honest with myself. I really don't want to feel that painful right now, which is why I will not push myself over there. But th- there'll be something else I have to link to, right, to train my, my clients. We got to find that link where they say the pain, the pleasure of this, of where I want to be in the future is going to offset the short term pain that I have to go through now. If that is the pain of changing something, the pain of saying adopting, um, if you know that eating a healthy diet is going to prevent illness and disease. Why aren't we doing more of that, right? Because there's more pleasure we associate to the habits of say eating whatever we want, drinking whatever we want, having a good time. There's nothing wrong with that, that's pleasurable. But we seek those kind of experiences. So I like to help my clients find something that you can link to that you find pleasurable about your future self that you're willing to sacrifice and have some pain today, right? The pain of discipline is far outweighs the pain of regret. I agree with that 100%. Yeah. So let me ask you a question. What is your one or two favorite principle, success principles from Thinking Go Rich? Thinking Go Rich, one of them is faith. You must believe in yourself. That is, that is something I'm working on constant, constantly. Having, you know, realizing that confidence is a skill. It's something that I have to practice. Having, like, the mental fortitude, the resilience to say, I have what it takes to follow through. I have what it takes to add, you know, to add value. And the other part about that is, let me think, it is imagination, but there's another one. I think it had to do with vis- visualization, imagination. That's a big yeah. one because yeah. if you can see it, it's you can see it after you believe it, not the other way around. Can I really see myself in the future? Can I see myself stepping on stage in front of 10,000 people and giving, you know, something motivational? I want to help people. Right. I'm not the best at what I do, but I know that we have stories that we can relate to. We have life lessons that we can we can all share that can help and inspire somebody else. Someone that really inspires me every day is Nick, Nick Villiard, the, the man that was born without arms and legs. And what he's done with his pain, what has he done with what he grew up with was his parents, his, his, his community taught him he could use what he had, his mindset, to do right. so much more then it wasn't what she could physically do. And that itself speaks about, he, he puts that into practice. Your mindset is, is key to how you, how you look at things, how you succeed, your belief in yourself. So, I mean, other principles are great, but those two stand out the most to me because those two mean the most to me in terms of what I need to work on every single day to improve myself. I agree with that 100%. When I started doing Instagram live videos about a year and a half ago, give or take, I didn't know who to talk to. So I literally reached out to my followers on the page. Literally, I sent a DM. I said, hey, you want to talk about the book? And it was kind of painful at the beginning. Yeah. Because for the first week, I almost got like no responses, nothing. And here's what I don't like about Instagram is that when you send a message, you know that they read it, but then there's there's no response. So you don't know if they tell you to, if they are thinking about it, if they tell you to, you know, the hell with you, we don't want you. Uh, You don't know if they cussed you out. You don't know if they loved you. You don't know if your message was good. You don't know if they don't speak English. You don't know, like you're clueless and that gets on your nerve. You're like, what What's going on? I send a message, you read it, either (laughs) say yes or no. Like, why why does it have to be in the lingo? Like, just Just say say yes or no. And yeah. then, and then it was crazy. So I said, you know what? 
we're going to continue. I think it was like the second week or third week that somebody said yes, and it was like a terrible, in, I mean, Z couldn't connect, the Wi-Fi wasn't working, I couldn't, I didn't know how to download the video, I, I didn't save the video, it was just bad, it was just horrible. It was on, I didn't know how to respond to people when they were asking questions. Like the worst kind of a live session you could imagine, anything you could possibly think of that could go wrong, went wrong. Like there wasn't anything that actually went right. The only thing that went right was that the, t the phone was on. That's it, I could see the screen. So that was the only thing, so it's but I got, uh, I've got a question for you. Well, what made you keep going? Because this is something you do that adds a lot of value for your community. They want to hear. And, and, right? and, and this was the case. What kept me going, it was my selfishness to learn from others. It wasn't that I wanted to go and interview you for you to get something. I figured if you have read the book, you might know something that I have not got from the book yet. Why? Yeah. Because I don't think I'm the smartest guy. I don't think I have a high IQ. I'm just a normal guy. And I'm a slow reader and I'm a slow learner also too. So I figured I was like, well, this kid's the best of both worlds. If I can talk to you, obviously we're going to be on live session. This, this is cool. I get to meet new people. But the number one reason was I wanted to learn from others what success principles and how to apply it, all of these different things that I didn't know. Because the way you apply success principles is different than the way I apply it. Because different culture, different background, you know, right now you're over there, it's cold, people may not be outside. Here in LA, it's sunshine, everybody's outside. So it's different environment. And in different countries, different laws, different culture backgrounds, different way of conducting business. So I figured this was this would be a good way for me to learn. So that's what kept me going. So it's it's one of those things that I see a lot of people, they give up way too soon. Mm. Like way too soon. Yeah, well, you. I, I like and, to hear. And you got to get this book. Okay. If you love Thinking and Grow Rich, you got to get this. I just Go got ahead. my new cover. I, I just got my new copy. And mine is a little bit uh, special because it's autographed. But Ooh, like Jeffrey that. Dillamore, he's the one who's been reading the newsletter for Thinking Grow Rich uh, for mm -hmm. 15 years. So any newsletter that you got from the Napoleon Hill Foundation, Jeffrey Dillamore did. So it's, and, and Jeffrey talks about it with a lot of his seminars that, you should not, under any circumstances, I don't care how bad it gets, you never give up. The only yeah. way that you give up is if you're dead. That's it. That's the only way. That, that's the only way they're going to get you to give up. Other than that, it's just learning experience. Well, think about this. If somebody is going to try to get you to give up, it's because, A, they know you're going to be successful. When you come across some opposition, you got people who are like, oh, you're crazy, or why are you doing this? Uh, they want to discourage you. They want you to doubt yourself, but you need to be bigger than that. You need to be like, I, I'm getting in line. I'm staying in line. I made a decision. I need to follow through. I mean, if I don't have what it takes to follow through, what good am I? If I don't have the lessons or what I needed to help somebody else, because I didn't learn that myself, I can't be of any help to anyone. But the other thing that was interesting, when you said that everything could have gone wrong in your video and like your beginning experiences, if you had no rapport with somebody and you invited them to interview like what do you tell them you know what this was great see goodbye oh my what do you do i mean i'd be laughing so hard because if i had an, an like a really awkward experience and you know some people they're just it's just not there the connection is great. but it's part of but it's part of life though you know i figured it can't just all be positive there will be experiences that you and i categorize in bad but yes. i've learned to learn that a lot of times you learn from those a lot more than you than you learn when things go right. When yeah. things go right, you're not alert. You're not on top of your game. You're not sharpening up your your, your tunes. So a, a lot of times you want to seek challenges because through challenges you get better. Other than that, I, I don't know how you would learn. The only time the only time I went and looked for it and how I learned everything that I learned for Instagram was by but things go wrong. So Googling it, searching it, reading it, seeing what other people's experiences was, contacting other people, asking them how they do it, what is their method. It's just you having, I think you being coachable 
to the circumstances, but not giving in and just keep pushing. And here is the other part that I think a lot of people need to kind of observe also too, that when challenges come, you don't want to stress yourself. You don't want to just keep going at it. Yeah. Sometimes you do need to step back. That could be for an hour. That could be a day. That could be a week. And then re revisiting the challenge again with a new mindset, a fresh mindset. A lot of times that helps it. And, and here is what I know. Any question we ask, the answer is within the question. So if you have that question, you also have the answer. Now, if you haven't find it yet, it's okay. You just got to be seeking it. And the universe and your internal system is going to give it to you. You just yeah. got to give it some time. It's not an instantaneous part of it. It just doesn't work like that all the time. You can't just wish for things and things materialize. It doesn't work. You got to give universe enough time. Just like you and I, when we plant a seed for an apple tree, we don't expect apples next season. You got to let the apple tree, you got to plant it, give it water, sunshine, and let God do the rest. Yeah. And then you just wait there and, and be present. If, if you need to protect the tree, if you need to give it whatever good soil, water, whatever you need to do, you're there, but you let the nature take its course. Mm -hmm. And if it hasn't happened for you, your season is not here yet, but mm -hmm. it's coming. So if you were to say what, what made you successful and you were looking back at your successes and your achievements, what would you say would be your winning formula? Because I'm winning formula is just being hard-headed. If you're Persian <laughs> and you're hard-headed, you just don't take no for an answer. So it's it's not it's not in the culture where you kind of fall down and you don't get up. And then, you know, I think it's the fear of what people think when you give up. Not the fear of what people think of what you're doing. I don't give a shit about that. That's their opinion. Totally fine. Sometimes I do take advice from them to adjust. But yeah. that doesn't mean I'm not going to do what I want to do. I'm just going to push forward. But you being hard-headed, not giving up on your goals, I think is a big factor of you being successful. Obviously, mastermind, collaborating with other people, working your ass off, it's a big deal. I mean, I think 95% of it is just working hard. Because whatever you lack in success principles, you will probably make up for it by working hard. Yeah. Enough people are going to recognize that you're working hard where they want to help you. They know that you're going to make it big and they want to be associated with you. Nobody wants to work with, with a lazy person. No, no, no. And, and you, you'll see it in how they follow through. Do they have integrity? Are, are those are the values that they have when they say, uh, I like when somebody says, I will do whatever it takes to improve myself. And so they're willing to do, give up something they absolutely love that was a bad habit to adopt something that knows it's taking all their willpower not to go back to that because they, they, they said my value and this integrity that I have about myself is going to make me fall through on that. And it's, it's very admirable. It's, um, and I would say hard headed is more persistence. It's determination. It's saying Definitely. I never give up. And I love meeting people like that because it's so inspiring. You will get people who, who just want to be around you because you will inspire that sort of, you know, you either inspire them or you piss them off. It's yeah, better yeah. to piss them off and have them recognize that they they don't have their they don't have their shit together. Oh, so yeah, a yeah. lot of times, you know, whenever you see someone that's going after their lives and they give you an advice, most of the time it's not a pleasing advice. It's not what you want to hear. That's mm -hmm. not the job of a coach. That's not the job of a mentor. A mentor is not supposed to be kissing your ass. No. I don't care if you are paying that mentor for their time. It doesn't mean anything. Monetary transaction is separate. A mentor, a coach is to tell you things that you know you're supposed to do, but you're not doing it. You just need to hear it from their mouth. And when you hear it, it's supposed to piss you off because you you don't have it together. You, th that, those are the things that you got to get done. So I see a lot of people just, you know, a lot of coaches are nice. They're polite. You know, they're very, very accommodating to their students. I'm not like, no, you hired me or you're going to pay me to get you do the things that you didn't want to do. And in order to do those things, I need to get on your dish for a minute. I'm going to be in your face because yeah. you didn't do it. So I don't do any paid coachings because 
I most of the time I have to refund their monies because I'm not like, get your money and just go. Like, you do not, like, you know, you got to sometimes, listen, you got to tell people the truth. Yeah. We got we to gotta get out of this habit of trying to be political, trying to be all kissing ass, trying to be all nice. If you can't take the coach's mentorship the right way, mm-hmm. your competitor is going to whoop your ass. Oh, your yeah, competitors man. are not going to be nice. Your competitors don't play by the rules. Your no, competitors are trying to put you out of business. Yeah. Flat out. They're trying to survive themselves too. So for you to be all like, you know, no, the, your competitors, you don't even get the opportunity to talk to them. At least with the coach, they're in front of you or you have some type of a conversation with them. So to me, is if you can't take the coaching like that, you're definitely not going to make it in business because somebody is going to be stronger, tougher, and more, you know, more willing to do the things that you're not doing. So to me, is you got to get tough skin. If you're going to make it, you got to be tough skin. Yeah, no, you hit it right there. It, you do have to, A, you, you, first of all, I like to say, I think Les Brown said this, I don't remember who did, but someone had said, your, people's opinions of you is none of your business. And really that's a freeing thought is that you don't let people's opinions affect your personal power, affect how you think and go about things because they're going to want to put you down and discourage you. But the other part about growing a thick skin is not to take anything personally, right? Is to say, I can take these compliments. I can take the criticism. Um, even as a coach, I'm there to shine light and guide. I'm there to ask permission. Do I have permission to ask you the tough questions? Do I have permission to keep you accountable? If these are the results you want, I'm not here just because you're going to pay me for my time. I want to really add value. I want to see you break through and get the results that you want. That's more important for me is to see someone's really, that light bulb went in their head and they're like, oh, I, I you know I'm today more aware of myself and how to self-coach myself so I can, A, not only be good for myself, but for good for everybody else and help them become successful and meet them where they are. That's so important for me. I realized being a coach wasn't to tell people what to do, but really they need, they already know the answer. And that if you find somebody that you work with that is a good fit, that com- the, the relationship just, it builds, right? Because I'm pretty direct. You and I, we're going to get on just fine, right? Because we can just talk straight. That's it. That's I how it's got to be. Like that. No sugar coating over here. No, no sugar coating. <laughs> because it's your life. I mean, yeah. we're talking about your life and your future. I don't think that's something that you should take lightly. That is very, very serious matter. Other people depend on you. And if you're a family person and husband, wife, children, boyfriend, girlfriend, you know, mom, dad, all of these people are depending on you to be successful. And a lot of times we don't realize it because they may not be saying it. You know, your children, when they're two years old, they're not going to come and say, Daddy, I'm counting on you to be successful so I could have a role model to follow or make sure you win in business so I could follow and have a legacy. Your kids are not going to say that, but that is what the reality is. They're depending on you to be successful, and you don't want to let them down. So I don't have any time to play around. We, we, don't, we don't have time to play around. It's just no, silly. No. We got work to do but you do realize what's most important to you. And so your decisions and the things that you do every single day is based around those values and those beliefs that you have about, you know, being significant, contribution, growth, um, having, having, um, you know, we, I like to say we are people that like to raise our standards of excellence, right? Because if we're always on the path of never um, constantly improving ourselves, we will not only realize our potential, but we can expand, we, we will do things beyond our wildest expectations. I like to say, okay, ordinary people doing extraordinary things, what was it that made them different or set them apart, right? What, what is it that sets us apart? You're an influencer and you got a lot of people that watch what you're doing because they can learn from you because you're persistent, because you show up, because you invite people who you never heard of, but you're like, you know what? I'm gonna talk to this person, ask them what makes them tick, what, what, lights, them, what lights them up, right? And what do you get? a massive amount of information of, of something you can, ideas, thoughts, things you can apply, themes. You, you know the common things of people who would make them successful. For me, I like to talk about your habits. I like to talk about your morning routine. I had it before I realized it was my morning routine because even before I went back to work, I had quit my job for a year, 
And people are like, how could you do that? And I said, I can, and I can just like go back to work. And it happened just within a year, went back to work, but I moved out of the country. So long story short, I realized that my morning routine helped me get back to the things that matter the most. And I, I do it, what I do, you know, how I start my day and how I end it. I try to. We'll probably have to do another video live session. Oh, and you're yeah. going to go through the step by step of what you do. So you okay. walk us down the first 30 minutes, first 40 minutes, and then what you do, because I know a lot of people uh, don't have a morning routine and they need to have a morning routine. And I think that kind of sets the tone for the day. So we'll definitely need to be able to do that. Listen, I thank you so much for taking this time and being with us. I appreciate you being here. I probably talk more than you talk. So next time I'm going to shut up and then let you talk. Um, but I, I appreciate you taking this time and being with us. Hopefully we get to do more. Oh, absolutely. Look forward to it. Happy Thanksgiving. Talk to you later. Take care. Bye-bye.